Hi there. Welcome to this uh, next session on programming for analytics using R programming. Uh, today we are seeing uh, what is called as data frames in R. Now if you are seeing this channel for the first time, if you are here for the very first time, uh, please do subscribe to this particular channel and hit on the bell icon so that you will get notifications on the latest videos I release in programming for analytics. So without uh, uh, wasting much time, uh, so let's get to the video and see what we have in store for today. It's always been a uh, practice in my video series that I always tell you certain interesting facts about uh, programming and uh, in particular our programming here. So today's interesting fact is uh, what and all various profiles or career you can actually expect when you are through with our programming. So you can become an R programmer. In fact, uh, that's one of the most lucrative career today. And R is predominantly used in data science. So you can have options like you can become a data scientist, a data analyst, a data architect. Uh, then you can also get into data visualization analyst, geo uh, statistician, and so on. So there are quite a you know number of uh, lucrative options with R. So now let's get into the uh, actual. Uh, you know video of uh, today's session what exactly we are going to learn today is you are going to understand uh, what is the uh, actual meaning of data frames in R so let's unlock data frames in R today okay now I'm just showing you one uh, particular picture here which talks about matrix and data frame so in the previous session we learned what matrices are in R uh, if you have not uh, seen that particular session you just go through that particular session and put the link in the description box and also put the card above so you can click on the particular card and you can just get into the matrix session the basic difference between a matrix and a data frame is a matrix is okay homogeneous uh, in nature so the all elements are of homogeneous nature whereas when you talk of a data frame the elements are heterogeneous in nature so data frame is organized in the form of a table as you can see from this diagram here it is organized in vertical columns and horizontal rows and each column will basically have different different data types so now let's see in R how to actually create this data frames and how to basically manipulate the data frames so let's get into the R studio now I am in R studio. Now uh, let's create a simple uh, data frame in R. In order to create a data frame in R, you have to make use of the function data.frame. So let's see how to create that. So I'll create a data frame object called as df1. So I'll say data.frame. So then I have to specify the column names of that particular data frame. Let's say that I'm going to specify three columns to that particular data frame. The first column name is employee number. Now I am going to supply the values of the employee number. So I'll use the I will use the combine operator and I'm going to use the sequence say one colon three. So the employee numbers are ranging from employee number one to employee number three. Great. Now then I'm going to specify the second column. Let me call it as EMP name. That is my uh, second column of the data frame. So here also I am going to use the combine function and I am basically going to specify three names. So let me call these three names as Anil is my first name. Then Chandra is my second name and Vasan is my third name. So now I have created three columns. Sorry, I've created two columns. One is the employee number and the employee name. Now I'm going to create another column, say for example, uh, EMP salary. Then I'm going to give values to this uh, employee salary. So I'm going to use the combine function once again. So let me give the salaries as 10,000, uh, 15,000 and 20,000. So now I have created three columns one is employee number employee name and employee salary and I have given values to this particular employee number employee name and employee salary so perfect my data frame is now actually given have been created using a syntax now let me check whether this data frame is working properly or not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute this line of code so when I execute this line of code, you can see that there are no errors coming up. So that's a good sign. So my data frame is actually created. 
Now I am going to print this particular data frame. So I'll say print df1. So df1 is the name of the data frame object. So when I print this, now you can observe the output. You are getting employee number, employee name and employee salary. And you can see that the records are populated. So you have got three records. That is one Anil and 10,000 is the first record. Two Chandra and 15,000 is the third record. Three Vasan and 20,000 is the third record. So you have got three records basically. Employee number one to employee number three. Now this is actually looking as a tabular format unlike matrices where you have only homogeneous elements where the elements also were in tabular format but the only difference is the data frame will actually take elements of a heterogeneous nature. Now I want to find out this particular data frame belongs to which class. So we know that in R everything is an object and from the object oriented paradigm we know that every object belongs to a parent class. Now I want to check out this particular data frame one which you have created belongs to which class. So how do I do that? You can make use of the class function. So I can say print class of data frame one. So when I run this, you can see the output I'm getting as data dot frame. So we can understand from this that df1 is a data frame object. So now we are very clear how to create a data frame and how to identify that which class it belongs to. Now suppose I want to actually make some changes in how I am going to print this particular data frame. So now you observe the output of this data frame here. You can see that you are getting employee number as 1, 2, 3 and even before that you are getting 1, 2 and 3 here. Now these are the index numbers or these are the row numbers which are given by data frame as default. Now it is pretty confusing here. I don't want these numbers to be displayed by R because here 1, 2, 3 is getting confused with 1, 2 and 3 here of the employee number. So I want to somehow bypass this being printing of 1, 2, 3. I want to bypass this. So how do I do that? In order to do that, I have to use one parameter called row.names is equal to false. So let's see how to do that. So I'll say print df1 and I'm going to use this parameter row.names is equal to false. Row.names equals to false. So here I have to give a comma. So when I give a comma here and when I execute this particular statement, now you have to ensure that false should be all in capital letters, otherwise it will give me an error. So when I execute this particular statement now, so you can see that 1, 2 and 3, the automatic row numbers have been surpassed. So you can control whether you want to actually display the automatic row numbers or you want to surpass that particular automatic row numbers by using row.names is equal to false. So now having understood that, it is very important for us to understand the structure of the uh, data frame what you have created. See every object would basically have a structure. Now this data frame also would have a structure and in order to make use of this particular structure or you want to get this particular structure, you have to make use of a method called str. So str is a method which will give me the structure of this particular data frame. So how do I print the structure of the data frame? I'll say print str of data frame one. Df1 is the name of the data frame. So when I run this, now you can see what is the structure of the data frame. So you can see that this data dot frame, which is the data frame object, basically consists of three variables. Okay, and it consists of three objects. So what are those objects here? In this case, observations. OBS stands for observations here rather than object. So there are three observations. That is, an observation is nothing but one record. So record number one, record number two, and record number three. So and each observation has got three variables. So what are those variables? Employee number, employee name, and employee salary. And you can also see that it is giving me the data type of that particular column. So EMP number is of the type integer, employee name is of the type character and the employee salary is of the type numeric. So what can you understand from here is you are getting the structure of the entire data frame. When I mean the structure, it will specify the type of the column. It will also specify how many observations are there and what is the data type of each and every column. 
quite an interesting uh, function and it is widely used in R projects. Okay, now there's another interesting uh, function in uh, R where we can summarize the data frame. So there's a lot of difference between summarizing the data frame and finding the structure. So let us use this function called a summary in order to summarize the data frame. Let's see how to use it. Before that, I'll just uh, you know clear up this particular uh, console. So now I am going to make use of the function called summary. Okay, let me put this in the uh, script editor. Print summary. So in the summary, I am going to pass this df1 as an argument. Now when I do that and execute this line of code, now you can see that I am getting the summary of my data frame. Now in each and every column here, you can observe that there are certain things which have been given from the statistics perspective. Of course, you want to learn more about this when we talk about uh, descriptive statistics. So I can see that you have minimum, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile and max. So it's pretty simple to understand. So you can see minimum. Minimum it says as 1.0 for employee number. Employee name length it is showing as 3. Employee salary minimum value it is showing as 10,000. So that means it is giving me certain statistical inferences here. What is the minimum value of employee number and what is the maximum value of employee number. So to make it more clear, let me run that particular data frame also. So I'll make use of this print data frame one. Okay, now my data frame one is printed. Now observe the employee number, which is the minimum employee number one here, one. So that is why it's saying minimum as 1.0. And what is the maximum employee number? It is three. So you have minimum value and the maximum value here. And when you come to the employee salary, you can see minimum employee salary is 10,000 and the maximum employee salary is 20,000. And you also have the mean employee salary. Mean is nothing but the average. So average employee salary is around 15,000. See, these are called as, you know, measurements of central tendencies. So you learn about this when we actually talk about statistics. But understand that R has got a very beautiful function called summary, which will summarize the entire data frame for me. So now you have understood two important functionalities of R, which in terms of an STR function, which will help me to get me the structure of that particular data frame. And you have the summary function, which will help me to summarize that particular data frame. Okay, now, how do I modify my particular data frame? See, once my data frame is created, it's not the end. Sometimes I may have to add a new column to my particular data frame. Now I'm gonna show you how to exactly add a new column to my data frame. Now this data frame, what you're seeing here, has got employee number, employee name, and employee salary. Now I want to add another column here called as attendance. So this attendance column will be a logical column or it could be of a logical data type. So present means it can have a value called true and say absent means it will have a value called false. So how do I add that particular column and feed in values to that particular column is what we are going to see now. So in order to add a new column, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider my data frame object. The name of my data frame object is df1. I'm going to have a dollar symbol here. Now I'm going to create a new column here. I'll call this new column as attendance. So this is my new column. So I'll make it as ATTEN. Then I'm going to use the combined function. Then I'm going to give three values. So true, true, and true. So that means all the three employees are present. So make sure that you give equal number of observations. So there are actually three observations in my data frame. So you need to give three observations for even the attendance column as well. So when I run this particular line of code, so you can see that a column would have been added. But if I want to check whether the column has been added successfully or not, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to print this df1. So when I print this df1, now you can see that a column has been added at the end. So like this, you can append the column. See, when, you, when I mean append, it is actually adding the columns to the end. So you can add any number of columns to your data frame. So that is how you basically modify the data frame by adding new columns. Now, the next thing in a data frame is how to create a new data frame from an existing data frame. 
Now this is something which we use quite often in data science or any other statistical programming. I have my data frame and the data frame would have certain amount of observations. But what I want to do is I want to create a new data frame from the old data frame. That means I have to subset the old data frame with the new data frame. Now how do I do that? That is what I am going to show you now. So let us create a new data frame now. So I'll create a new data frame called DF2. So I'll create a new data frame called DF2. Now the, this DF2, I'm going to create this data frame by extracting two columns of my old data frame. So my old data frame name was data frame one. So I will use this function called data frame because I'm creating a new data frame. Now from this data frame one, I am extracting a column called employee number and from data frame one, I am extracting a column called employee salary. So now I'm taking employee number and employee salary, two columns I am taking and I'm creating another data frame called DF2. So let us run this uh, piece of code now. Okay, great. It's created successfully. Now when I print this DF2, when I print DF2, you'll see what happens. So it's giving me and data frame which consists of two columns which has been extracted from df1 data frame which is employee number and employee salary so like this you can subset the data from the main data frame but you have again these one two three uh, which are actually created by r by default so you can actually eliminate it you know how to eliminate it now so when we are printing df2 i can simply say uh, row dot names is equal to false so these row numbers or row names can be eliminated now you can see a perfect data frame coming as an output so this is how you basically subset a data frame or create a new data frame from an existing data frame now once you have created a data frame it is important for us to access the individual elements of a data frame like how you can you know access the elements in a table using an SQL command where you can select rows and columns same things can be done in R also but the concept here is quite different you may have to use something called as a subscript so it's accessing the elements of a data frame can be actually done using a subscript command in R so let's see how to do that so let me clear up this particular console now. So in order to use the subscript, you have to use the square brackets. So let me show you some examples. So let me take this data frame one and I'm going to give one comma one. That means extract the one comma one means first row, first column, the element which is there in the first row and the first column. So when I run that, it is giving me an output called one. So why it is giving me an output called one? Because when you see this particular data frame, you can see that the first element is actually the intersection of first row and first column. So employee number is the first column. So in the first row, you have an element called one. So you're getting one. Suppose if I want multiple elements to come out. So I want to display multiple records of multiple columns. So how do I do that? So I can also do this using a different technique here. So what I can do here is I can say df1. So in the subscript, what I can do, I can, give, I can say one colon three. That means display rows from one to three, but I want only two columns to be displayed. Which are those two columns? I want employee number and employee name. So I want employee number and employee name to be displayed, but I want all the rows to be displayed. So there are three rows here. So I'm giving one colon three. So I'm telling one colon two here. So when you run this particular line of code now, you see what happens. It displays me three observations because you have set one colon three. So that's a range and you are only extracting two columns. That is the first column and the second column. So like this, you can actually, you know, control how you want to access the observations of your data frame. Okay. Now we shall see how to basically add number of observations to my data frame. So for example, I have a data frame with certain amount of observations. So I have three observations now in the initial data frame. Now I want to add three more observations. So let us see how to do it. So for example, let's say that I'm printing this data frame one. See when I print data frame one, you have employee number one, two and three. 
Now I want to add 4, 5 and 6 employee numbers and I have to give their relevant values for employee name, employee salary and attendance. So how do I do that? In order to do that, I have to make use of a function called as rbind. So what is this rbind function? The rbind function will append the records to the old data frame. So the new records has to be accumulated in a new data frame. I'll tell you how to do that. See, I have a line of code here which I have actually kept in the buffer. See, I am creating a data frame called df2. Now, df2 is my data frame. In this particular data frame, and I am giving the employee number from 4 to 6. Employee names are Kiran, Kumar and John. And employee salaries are 12,000, 17,000 and 22,000. And attendance, I am giving it as true, true and true. That means all these uh, employees are present in that particular organization now. Now, I am going to run this. So now when you run this, you can see that a data frame called df2 is created. So let us print this uh, data frame 2. So print df2. So when I print this df2 now, you can see that 4, 5 and 6, these three employee numbers have been created. Now you have 1, 2, 3. So these are the uh, values of my old data frame. So this is df1 and this is df2. Now I'll create one more data frame called df3. Now what I will do is I will use this function called rbind and I will pass these values df1, comma, df2. So both the data frames I will pass and I will run it. Now it has bounded successfully. Now I will print the value of df3, the values of df3. So that is my data frame 3. Now you can see that the data frame has been appended. That is data frame 2 is appended with data frame 1 and it has stored it in a separate data frame called as df3. Now the df3 data frame will now have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So there are totally say 6 employee numbers in this particular data frame. So if you don't want the uh, row numbers to be displayed, so you can always say row dot names is equal to false. So when you say row not row dot names is equal to false, you don't get those row names there. So in this particular session, you understood uh, how to create a data frame. You understood what is the basic difference between a matrix and a data frame, how to add a column to an existing data frame and how to create a new data frame from an old data frame, how to subset the data frame. And you also saw how to access the individual elements of a data frame. And you also saw how to append the new records to a data frame. So these are some of the most important things which you have learned in R in terms of, you know, R data frames. These are called as unlocking the data frames. So thank you so much for watching this particular session. If you like this session, please hit the like button. And if you want the notes on this particular session, please do mention your email ID in the comment box. I will send you the notes on the email. So I'll see you in the next session. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.